How's it, everyone? Wayne Unknown here, and welcome back to another episode of Geeking Out. I almost wanted to say cosplay con talk, but we are doing Geeking Out, where we basically discuss everything nerd and geek related. I am sorry if my my uh, camera is a little slow. I'm in the middle of uh, was in the middle of doing uh, getting ready for the X, the Spider Man podcast review, but I am joined here by some familiar faces: Bob Greenway, Samantha Passy, who you will see in. A later episode for cosplay context get to know that cosplayer returning brian and also you've seen them in uh, the previous cosplay con talk episode elsa and we are going to be talking about the difference and similarities between marvel and dc comics from the studios to the comics characters you name it so i guess to begin um one of you may be able to answer this who who started out first? Was it DC or was it Marvel Comics? It DC. was DC, definitely with Superman. By about a year and a half, if you count Timely Comics as being Marvel, yeah, uh, they had count stuff that. out before. I would, I would count that. So, um, Timely Comics, count. what was, was that? You said that was Marvel's original name. Yeah, and then it was Atlas, and then it was, then it was Marvel. Yeah. Yep. And they, this was but, all Stan Lee who started that. No. No, 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 no. He was he was working at Timely and at Atlas, but then he was put in charge of Atlas at the about the same. I don't remember whether he um, um, initiated the name change, but uh, he was at about that time, and he did uh, you know Fantastic Four number one and uh, and launched what we now know as the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Hmm. But and a lot of that came with. Like the names of some of the characters and stuff, and they were looking to update and keep. Oh it yeah, and, and yeah. That's D when the comics code thing <laughs> came in and all that fun stuff. D but, DC's DC uh, original Captain Marvel before his name change was to Shazam. That is a podcast in itself. Yeah, oh yeah. But that that but, that but the the name comparison though, you know, Marvel yeah. got that, and we had a you know DC had a well. DC part of that goes back game. to what you were just talking about the similarities and differences. So at the time that both these companies were getting off the ground so to say you know pulp magazines um and detective stories like the shadow that kind of stuff so this was a transition from radio into a visual format and you had like little abner becoming a big comic uh you know uh hell i think even the archie stuff started around these times they, they were starting to focus on a lot of kids stuff but there was some of those kids that listened to radio shows that were becoming adults and they were giving them something to, to work with and that's where I was saying, you know, you, they started off pretty similar and then they had the divergence and then went back together. But um, DC was a little, I don't want to say dark, but a little bit more adult oriented initially. Ooh, I mean, you read the original, <laughs> you read the original Batman. Well, dude had but a I'm talking about like every title. I'm not saying that they just had one. It was pretty much, that's why it was Detective Comics before they just shortened it to DC. Because, you know, that weird DC, DC Comics is Detective Comics Comics. But yeah. um, actually at the time, um, it was just... A, it was just stuff put out by national periodical publications. Yeah. They didn't even call themselves DC until I think like the sixties. Oh yeah. Something here's, like that. Here, here's a good example of an old DC comics. Cause you know, like Brian, I want to show that I like, for example, dark DC, the witching yeah. hour. Oh wow. Just oh. like the cover is dark. Creepy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you... I did a lot of horror stuff in the 50s. Yeah, and then uh, since you mentioned that the way too, a lot of the influence for that darker stuff was also oh, coming yeah. from guys like Bill Gaines doing the EC comic stuff, Tales from the Crib, yeah, things like that. House of Secrets and this, each other. I'm afraid to take this thing out because if I feel like I take this out, it's It'll just going gonna... to dust. Yeah, <laughs> but I just like want to show what DC comics were like. We, you guys were talking how dark they were, like, oh yeah, Tales dark from back the then. Crypt and. Uh, graveyard stories and I mean, it was all horror stuff and cowboy stuff and, you know lash larue there was all all that stuff oh, so yeah, I mean, and they also were just you know out everything they could they got weird stuff like starman i, I don't know Starman. yeah it was interesting when i worked for friendly neighborhood i, I read a bunch of them <laughs> i mean i know i don't know Thank you for letting me know that the Spider-Man podcast is now done exporting. My computer is moving a lot faster now. Awesome. Yeah, I can follow your mouth now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, you know, not, it's not like one of those, uh, <laughs> dull, like a <laughs> like a like a dull, like a uh, foreign film where you know the mouth isn't really moving with the wording. 
<laughs> well, I'll I'll wait to post the Spider. I'll wait to post the Spider Man one up later. <laughs> it's gonna be a late episode, which I'm not really worried about. Um, and you got and Bob and uh, Brian, you saying that DC and Marvel were literally like right or like next door neighbors? Yeah. I didn't know that specific that specific detail, but uh, um, they were they did start out at about the same time, and they, you know, all along they've tended to have uh, writers and artists cross from one to the other, and yeah. so there were a lot of, there was a lot of a um, um, lot of interactivity and and so forth. Yeah, but they were literally across the street from each other. <laughs> like, hey, Bob. Yep. Hey, Stan. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> just like that, just like that Looney Tunes cartoon where uh, Wiley e. Coyote and the Sheepdog are just punching, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you I, had... think it was, I think the wolf there had was a different character, but yeah, you get the idea. Yeah, they were just right there, and then yeah, somewhere crazy. in that same block of uh, buildings and stuff, uh, what became Mad Magazine was starting up too. Like I said, because you had the EC stuff with Bill Gaines and all those guys, you know, up coming up, up and coming. So yeah. All right, I just had to plug in my webcam. My webcam back in. I'll be here. Oh, you'll see my face shortly. Um, so I know for the longest time, and I think if everyone is familiar with comics and everything, there's always that Marvel is better than DC. DC is better than Marvel. I don't think Sorry. one is one is more better than the other, in my opinion. But that's just me. Uh, for me, I think it kind of fluctuates back and forth depending on what time of history you're looking at. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd say that, and then I'm... also depends on what you're into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're looking for big, splashy, actiony type of stuff. Then Marvel might be the way to go if you want a little bit more ground, uh, not necessarily grounded, but better structured characters, and in most cases, better development. That you know, on a constant basis, then DC might be the way to go. Okay, so my face may not be showing for a while because my webcam's now acting up. Oh no, he's <sighs> without <a> face. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, you know, uh, as far as one of the initial differences, um, you could even start off with uh, DC's always been focused around really strong characters, really strong character de development. Uh, and with that, you know, the, the storylines reflected all that. Marvel was pumped, you know, early pumping out book after book after book, seeing what stuck, and then, but they were also a little bit more action-y, but it was attractive. So, you know, there's your initial difference, and then they did start kind of flip-flopping back and forth to where Marvel started focusing on uh, being more grounded in reality. That's why everything takes place in Manhattan and whatever, and, you know, DC was... It hey, I'm back. Matter where it, it hey, didn't you really matter where it took well, place. Yeah. Thank you. I don't think it really mattered where it took place. It was because it was a what it was who it was about not where or what and i don't know if bob you'd agree with that or i'm talking about the earlier stuff you know it's like yeah Metropolis, not Center the, city all that doesn't exist well but originally yeah. superman was in metropolis and batman was in gotham because they were trying to say it was in new york without saying it's in new york yeah. and uh just kind of uh and then you know all these other cities uh, like keystone city and yeah. and so forth uh they just kind of came out of the same mentality of we want it to be kind of in this area but we don't want to tie it to a specific city so i can feel like it could be your city yeah um you know metropolis would not like take the place of monmouth oregon but uh we could uh we could kind of feel like it's the the in, in our general area and that's why the uh um that's why the daily planet became the daily planet because it, it originally was the Daily Star, but then they realized there there are newspapers called Star. They didn't want to have some newspapers that were carrying the Superman comic strip um, have to uh, be like basically advertising their rivals. So they said, okay, there's no Daily Planet anywhere in the United States. We'll call it the Daily Planet, and that's uh, that's how that name stuck. And most of it's just been like similar similar kinds of things. Um, as far as the, the cities and the institutions, um, Marvel just, uh, he, they kept the, the second part of uh, making something that sounded right with the Daily Bugle and the various corporations. But uh, uh, they said, well, why not just, let's just go ahead and put it in the place that we know. And yeah. then we can just send our artists out to wherever and they can just draw the, the settings and um stick the superheroes in or you know they'd, they'd be places that they were that the artists were familiar with 
And so they could draw it and make it look grounded and more realistic. Yep. Hmm. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you guys are right. Marvel does more focus on more like fictional places, but there are like the, you know, Zakovia and Oh God, Magneto's Island and all that. But yeah, Marvel does seem to uh, more focus yeah, on Genosha like more... and yeah. uh, Markovia and uh, um, oh, watch what? Dr. Doom's country. Zakovia? Uh, oh, Zakovia. Liberia. Well, not very. Yeah, 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 Liberia. Yeah, Because that is me. I... But yeah, I mean, all, <laughs> DC also has some, you know, they also share real places like Washington, DC and all that. Yeah. Yeah, but I was just talking about the, the core philosophies initially. You know, you had fantastical places with, with grounded characters. You had grounded or realistic places with fantastical things on, on the other side with Marvel. You know, they were, they were using real settings with all this crazy shit happening that nobody's ever seen. And it was just that weird dichotomy there. So already you got a difference and they're trying to appeal to different audiences. This is in different ways. And I always appreciated the earlier DC stuff because it was more character driven. Um, and they, they kept that going for a long time. And then when Marvel caught up, it was, there was just always like a, there was never a one-to-one -one for very long. And when there was, it was so obvious that it was like, this is stupid, you know, <laughs> you know, but uh, even, well, I don't know when that real big shift would have happened, Bob, would you say probably in the seventies, maybe when they really started solidifying, like, this is what we're doing and we're going in that direction and this is what we're doing and we're going in that direction and they you know might have still had the name or in one in aquaman but they were being told in completely dissimilar ways i mean because like i said that that to a certain point they were just constantly i'm trying to outdo each other well namor was um kind of a copy of aquaman by a couple of years considering namor was a timely comics character yeah he uh, but he yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some of these go way back, dude. Oh, geez. Yeah. The the uh, the big three in timely comics during the war were the Submariner, Captain America, and the original Human Torch, who was an android. Oh, I remember being told about that. And they're called they were called the what was it the, the were they in the Invaders? That sounds right. And uh, um, the Human Torch had a sidekick named uh, I think it was Toro. And then Bucky, and they were also kind of, I think they made up the all winner squad as a whole. And there were a couple of, yeah, and that squads. was the child Bucky at that point, too. Yeah. 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 That was when he wore the weird the shorts shoes. and the stupid shoes, but that was kind of a throw <laughs> at, at Batman. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah. Oh, what? yeah. Wait, what was but that? That was, that was, but Matt Namor basically was, was from the beginning told differently from Aquaman. Mm -hmm. um, and, Aquaman. And, and, Aquaman was the uh, um, like the half human Atlantean king, and Namor was uh, the first. I think this is the first character who is described as being a mutant. Hmm. Just like in the cin cinematic universe, recently the M word was first applied to Namor. Yeah. Um, Sam and Elsa, when was your first? Are you more so? I gotta ask him and Elsa. Are you more DC or Marvel? And what was your first introduce, uh, introduction to either universe? <laughs> since we're since we're doing the similarities, because it seems like it's like because like right between like Bob and Brian is like Marvel, and like you and Elsa are more like DC, and I'm just like in the middle. <laughs> well, I am a huge fan of DC. I grew up on it. I do not know my original start, but I do know my first hero that you can remember. His complete backstory, most people don't know him, but Plastic Man. Oh, oh yeah. awesome. Yeah, this, <laughs> at one time, the strongest character in the entire DC universe because of okay. what, how his mind worked. Yeah, good choice. I, I approve. Nobody remembers yes. that guy. He was fantastic. I love that Plastic Man. Yeah, he was great. It's he had a great cartoon series. It's, it's plastic, it's plastic, it's plastic Man, well, is, is he like where the red and the goggles and have the black? Yes, yes. that's him. Yes. He's the okay. criminal who became a superhero who worked with Kite Man. <laughs> yes. That's a weird name. Oh, it was Wait, Kite Man. I thought uh, Kite Man was no. Oh, I no, like Kite Man's DC. Yeah, okay. Kite Man's yeah. DC. So Plastic Man's DC. So basically, Ill Brian. You know, <laughs> Ill Brian. Yes. Oh, God, we'll get it to we'll get it to bizarre comic book characters in another episode. Well, yeah. I, 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 I didn't mean I didn't know that. I didn't know uh when there's was... 
Oh, uh, early 60s, and then there was the 70s and 80s cartoon show. Since Elsa mentioned that uh, mm -hmm. we're doing these differences and similarities, Marvel's answer to Plastic Man was the Elongated Man. Oh, wrong. The Elongated was Man was always was first? DC. From was the he? Beginning. I, didn't, Plastic didn't Man was bought from another company. That's what, okay. That's Fantastic. Right. Mr. Fantastic sorry. is, the, is yeah. the Marvel's residence. Yeah. I was trying to remember where the Elongated Man got thrown in there. I knew there was a weird rights thing, and I thought at one point they had it over there at, at Atlas. But no, you're right, Bob. Sorry. But yeah, oh, that geez. was another one of those similarities. In the Flash yeah. show. Yeah, and he, he drank the, and the elongated man drank the Gingold serum, and that's how he got his stretchy powers. Hmm. It was uh, done by, by by science. Yeah. Since we're kind of talking about like the the past, the what would be the Silver Age or, or Bronze Age of comics? Is it, we're, we're, we're we're nailed right into the Silver Age here, the sixties, early okay. seventies. Okay. Um, Samantha, same question. What was your first introduction to? Uh, the, the 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 classic Marvel DC Comics era. Since we're talking about Silver Age and everything, and who would you who would you who do you prefer between Marvel and DC? We're not trying. I'm not trying to sound like one of those fanboys you see online all the time. <laughs> <laughs> For a long time, it like I was back and forth because there are certain characters of DC I really like, certain characters of Marvel I really like. But now it's just I I prefer DC over Marvel. Hence, because you married part. Batman, honey. Hence the shirt. <laughs> yeah, she's dressed as the, as the Justice League today. She's, oh, yeah, yeah. Flash, Superman. Yeah. Well, and she's yeah. actually married to Batman, so... Yeah, I, uh, that's not a joke. He caught... I, my husband caught his Batman, so I... I have seen that. I, I, yeah, I have yeah. seen his cosplay at Midtown. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, um... First character? I, I think it was... I think it was Batman. Well, I introduced all three of you kids I, to all kinds of I, stuff early, and it's just what stuck, stuck. So I, I, I couldn't even begin to tell you who the first exposure was. The thing that I remember is, is the watching the Dark Knight with you at some point, but then I like I hated Batman. Yeah. <laughs> like I not did not like him, and then it kind of grew on me the more I watched it. So I would say Batman was my first introduction to the rest of dc what about marvel if you can remember i, I think well it would have been spider-man honey with because of me but i don't think that really yeah, stuck well, I, don't, I don't remember <laughs> yeah well because a lot of those wayne when they were really popular you know her and her sister were just infants and stuff so yeah but that was the first introduction to that i think i Drug. We'll go with Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be. I I don't know. We were so young when he would show us that, so I I don't know. Yeah, but now so now that now that we're talking about like Marvel and DC in the '60s, this is like stuff Brian and Bob and I'm sure Elsa and Sam were introduced to as well. What was DC and Marvel like in the '60s? Because you know, by the time Stan Lee has made a name for himself, Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko. Bob King and I do will mention Bill Finger because I feel like Bill Finger does not get enough credit. Yeah. Not, not as much as he deserves, that's for sure. Yeah. So Marvel and DC um, in the '60s and the '70s, what what was it like? Psychedelic, man. Everybody, yeah. Oh, it started getting very interesting because you had the Comics Code time. Authority going on, and there were certain things that you could not do. Um, that was, you know, in the in the name of uh, that would be in in terms of realistic crime you couldn't just depict realistic crime and that's why so many of the so much of the stuff that was going on in the 60s um was just so fantastical and over the top and and crazy um why that's why you had uh um some of these uh, more far out uh, uh sci-fi based characters um some of which have stuck and stuck around and and worked out really well, like Metallo. Ooh, and, uh, I, I, I'm familiar uh -oh. with I'm familiar with Metallo from DC. The only yeah one of Superman's strongest enemies. Who, if I'm not mistaken, from what I remember from the animated show, he had a thing of kryptonite inside his body. That's what powers that him. powered his cyborg. That's his cyborg body. I remember being introduced to him in the animated series back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's he's a badass. As, he always has been. Other than his appearance, that's pretty. He's that version is uh, true to the original, and I think his appearance in the comics has been adapted to that. Um, Brainiac, I think, was an, as another one who was introduced <laughs> during that time. Um, 
Brainiac. Lex Luthor Ew. got. <laughs> Yeah, yeah Lex Luthor got to change from a, uh, a mad Brainiac scientist. <laughs> got changed from got Lex Luthor got changed from a mad scientist into, uh, um, well, a, a high tech villain basically. Well, and he's also representing, you know, damn the man and all that stuff, and you know, Captain Industry and all that. No, it wasn't that wasn't until after Crisis on Infinite Earths that uh, Luthor later, really yeah. be, they really later. leaned into. John Byrne helped add Luther leading well, into Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, they kind of started like hinting at the, you know, their 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 stance on corporate America and, and all that kind of stuff fairly early, but it wasn't over it until later, absolutely. No. Jericho. Wait, Jericho? So all of you sounded like aliens for a second and my oh. computer's being a little stupid. Oh. <laughs> like I don't know what you said. So <laughs> um, who yeah, is, but... who would you say is, you know, as Lex Luthor, who would you say his Marvel counterpart is? Do maybe? Um, I would be between um, Green Goblin or Wilson Fisk. Ooh. Ooh. I can't. I mean, I mean, yeah, I can see that they're both power hungry bald men. <laughs> yeah, bo bo Norman bo Osborn. Bo both Norman both Osborn, are, both, Wilson both, Fisk. Both their enemies wear red and blue. Green yeah. And purple. Yeah. Oh yeah, Wilson. Yeah, Wilson Fisk's his original outfit was the white coat, purple turtleneck, black pants. It was just a business suit. And that and that giant bejeweled cane. Yeah. Yeah. All like so, eight hundred pounds of muscle on that guy too. That's all it is. Yeah, he's just nothing but stacked muscle. Big burly man. That's good. I wanted to look it up, and yeah, most people say Wilson Fisk is the. The King the Marvel. Is it be, is it because is it because they're both bald and? That's what it says. Yeah, they're both rich and bald. <laughs> I, they're also. But, but the thing is, but the thing is, what? <laughs> but the thing is, uh, Lex Luthor needs a souped up, a, a powered up suit just to take on Superman, while Wilson Fisk is pure muscle can you know nearly beat the living shit out of Spider Man if he could. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's where the the uh, Norman Osborn side comes in the as uh, what's Lex Luthor's counterpart there. Oh man. Oh yeah. And Wilson Fisk, he was introduced in what year? Late sixties, I believe. Yeah, because Spider Man was introduced in the sixties as what in the early sixties as well. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't remember whether he I think I think he may have started even as a Daredevil. He was, Dare he was in Daredevil. That's why I'm just trying to remember what year, somewhere in there, because he was Daredevil's main guy. 68 sounds about right. I did have a a, a question waiting for, for Elsa, though. If, if you started yes. off in D.C. with Plastic Man, which direction did you go with their entire gallery or, or uh, <laughs> catalog of comics? Because that is a very interesting intro to D.C., and to, and to know his whole backstory and to be into him to me is just intriguing because so few people remember him past the cartoons, and that's well, why it was great to see him come back in like the Dark Knight um, uh, Strikes Back. He was a main um, character in that. Basically, it just was all over the place because libraries. I don't think the generation now knows what a library is. What what is that? Where you go to look at yeah. pictures, books, yes, those book with, things with with words. Yeah, it's it's like a mix yeah. of Barnes and Nobles and also Blockbuster, but everything for free. Yeah. But you have to return it. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> so it just went on like looking at interesting uh, covers. I never read like what was the backstory. I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. Grab. I think the next one was the original Teen Titans. So like, you know, Ooh. where Dorf uh, Starfire had her really long hair. Oh, that big. Yeah, where she was like half naked, where she looked, where she looked half naked, basically. Yes, <laughs> and hair larger than the rest of her. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which was a thing for a long time, by the way. Was it that? Was that seventies or sixties? Not a good one. <laughs> Starfire um, was introduced in the seventies. Yeah, I was going to say that was all after, before some of the character conversions, because Robin stayed a teenager for probably twenty years before <laughs> before she died. Oh, or Robin, which, Rob, depending Rob, on which Rob, Rob, Robin's Robin's Dick. original Robin's original Nightwing's original suit though from the Teen Titans that that giant leotard with the uh, I, I I can see um, Sam I can see I can see, I can see Sam I can see Sam just like <laughs> it hurts my I think you may be thinking of the original. Earth to Golden Age Robin's 1970s costume that was like predominantly red. Kind of looked like a uh, dead man's outfit. 
a little bit. DC. Yeah. Oh, isn't that like a different hero? Was it like he had a red tube after he died on his head or capsule? Who wait, that was it? Red Hood? Yeah, oh, that Hood. Red Red Hood yeah. was also the original uh, Joker, Robin. which which oh, was well, that was the Joker's original thing. identity. But yeah. Red Hood later was uh, J- a resurrected Jason Todd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which was yeah, but, the, but the capsule head thing, they kind of retconned the origin of that because it was just some yeah. notorious criminal, kind of like the Dread Pirate Roberts. They would uh, put the, the hood on just a random thug and and, and basically you know, terrorize the just city. like basically like Spider Man, anyone can be Spider Man, anyone can yeah, be. Yeah, that was the hood. idea. <laughs> and see, and, and, you know, that's uh, so for what else I was talking about. The uh, reason for my question, I don't mean to. Take away from me on, on that way. No, no, because, no you're, you're you're fine. I want Elsa and Sam well, to get some word yeah, in as well. Yeah, the re- the reason why I was asking her though too. Uh, okay, I asking Sam's kind of unfair because of me. You know, uh, and if, if Bob and Elsa didn't know, that's my daughter. Um, so, you know, her her opinion is very skewed in a couple different ways, and I and, and I, <laughs> and I kind of forced some of her interests. So to hear Elsa say that she's grabbing these books because of the covers and because of the content of you know of teen representation and stuff. But why did DC grab your attention and not Marvel if they were doing the same thing? Like you had Alpha Flight, you had uh, X Factor, you had the X Men. Was it because they weren't teenagers and the Titans It was because were? I was yeah, she had enough choice. to read that shelf. Okay, all right. <laughs> but, but I was. <laughs> Introduce, don't worry, into the Marvel uh series of throughout movies because of my brother who enjoys Marvel more than I do. Okay. Well, and the reason I was asking is because of the similarities during that time. They were still trying to keep up with each other and introduce, oh, if you're going to like these guys, you'll love Alpha Flight. You'll, if you like these guys, you're going to love the Teen Titans. You know, they were going back and forth and everybody was popping out pretty much the same book. So I was just curious as what the appeal Who's, al- who's you- Alpha Flight? Ah. <laughs> you're, Alpha you're, Flight. Talking, you're, you're talking to someone who. <laughs> Whose knowledge of the comic books, and I will say this because we're allowed to cuss on the Geeking Out podcast, is like my knowledge with Marvel that much. Okay. DC, uh, I'm more I'm more familiar <laughs> with DC with the with their animated their movies and some of their comics because I'm sorry, but Alpha Marvel... Flight's like a, a C list Canadian superhero team I, with, with actually the Canada's A list team, the government's A list team. And that's why they're Alpha Flight. There was also a yeah. Beta Flight and Gamma yeah. Flight. But I mean, just the C list as far as like popularity was concerned. Oh, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be yeah. talking yeah. until John Byrne took over. We'll, we'll, we'll be talking yeah, well, about a lot th- of fair enough, and, uh, yeah. We'll be talking about some of the low, uh, low letter list uh, comparison characters in this podcast as well. Yeah, because so well, you uh, also had like Excalibur, which was like a third rate uh, X Men and stuff. But that's uh, that's why I was asking also is because there was so many of those books around that time that you're talking about that were almost one for one. Mm-hmm. I was just curious as to what 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 appealed on one or the other. Well, like I said, it was mostly a height difference. I couldn't okay. reach up to get more. No, no, fair enough. Oh, well, that's perfectly uh, right. understandable. <laughs> and if it spoke to you, it spoke to you. That's great. Uh, having been in the industry years and years ago. A lot of the the the, the uh, it's marketing this? tactics were Alpha Flight. Yeah, that's them. Yep. Yeah, Wendigo, the, the weird looking <laughs> Bigfoot, Mariner, uh, Shaman, OB. Vindicator. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that that's one big her furry burly whatever <laughs> the hell that. Yeah. Yeah. As uh, I think it's Sasquatch in it. Uh, or was it that Wendigo? The no, furry. Wendigo, Wendigo. Was, uh, the other one. Yeah. Oh, and here here Wendigo's here's a, a better guy. here's a better yeah. look at their like OG. Design from the what was it seventies? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Weird. See, that's Alpha Flight. Just waiting for Marvel Disney to make a show or a movie based off them. Now they have, <laughs> yeah. People are people have been saying, when are we going to see Alpha Flight? And they probably will be. Uh, they're they're somewhat connected to the X Men. They have a couple of episodes that where they appeared in the uh, X Men cartoon. Oh, I recognize the the. I recognize the guy in the with the white black and white outfit. Uh, uh, Namor cosplay has done a cosplay of him, of North Star. Yeah, yeah. North, yep, that, 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 that's the one. North Star, right twin there. sister Aurora. And for those who want to see what um, uh, Starfire's hair looked like back in the day, yep, there it is. That's it all yeah, that's that. That looks like she's had a trim, but still, yeah. like it was yeah, that big you. hair, man. Jeez, like I, I, I have to give props to the, uh, the, the uh, artist. Just like 
or whoever said, you know what we need? We need Starfire to have big, big, wavy, bushy well, hair. I believe that would be George Perez. Uh, yeah. Uh, re- rest, in pe- rest in peace to that man, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was, I think it was Wolfman and Perez who uh, came up with most of the new characters in the new Teen Titans. Same. He also came up with Wonder, uh, later design for Wonder Woman as well. Have you seen the live action Titans that HBO Max did? They kind of did the same thing with Starfire's hair. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's so big. beautiful, I will admit. Her, oh, she's, her, she looks her... great. She's gorgeous. <laughs> See, I do like the fact that, I guess since we're kind of talking about these older comics, I do like the fact that this, the live action stuff does like giving small nods to the older the older comic book characters and their original well, I think you kind of have to. yeah. I mean, if you're DC, though, it, it's it, it, that, 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 that's that's a rock. That's a that that's an unsteady. Yeah. That's an unsteady. That that's an unsteady bridge. <laughs> They're trying because some because cool. sometimes, like Bob, like Brian was saying, translating live action to bake off a character's look from the comics does not always go well. No. So did um did uh, you uh, Elsa or or Sam? I'm not sure. If- you ever read like say the new mutants when it was in its run which was kind of like marvel's answer to the teen titans because it was all kids i briefly like skimmed through it but i wasn't a fan okay because it ended like in the early 90s when that's when x-force became a thing but um what about you elsa did you ever read the new mutants uh i'm quickly looking who they're up i can remember by art cannonball but... you had warlock um <laughs> Boomer. I read it at a Barnes and Noble. They made they made they made Cannonball, Psyche, oh, Wolfsbane. Yeah. yeah. They made they made it they made a they made a movie based off of it. We had to wait years to see, and I heard it was kind of a disappointment. Oh, that was not, not a movie. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> not entirely a disappointment. I saw it in a matinee. It's worth a matinee. It's, oh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I believe you. Well, the reason I was asking because that actually is another one. Like you went from the uh, it was. Another one of those attempts to appeal to mo- most of the comics during the sixties into the eighties and stuff were very much a product of their you know the time period and stuff you know with economic stuff and what? world events and whatever. But it was still all that these both these companies are trying to go one to one. They learned their lesson in the late fifties, early sixties to not just flood the uh, oh, I think market. So. Oh, Sam's having connections Uh-oh. issues, or Elsa, or Elsa. Can we? Are you still there, Sam? No, she'll she'll come back on. Okay, Sam's frozen. Uh, right. sorry, my roommate was telling me some information about uh, Nakwana. No, you... oh. wrong thing, Chameleon. Okay, yeah, Sam will be back. There she is. Oh, hey, you're sorry. right. It, it kicks what? me down. That's oh. weird. Are you sure? It sounded like aliens, and then it just went black. <laughs> It's because you are on Utah internet, honey. So now we're now we're talking about the comic, the Marvel and Marvel and DC comics, between from like the late seventies and early eighties, where they're kind of like who can bring out the better comic. Well, what I was getting at is like you know they they both kind of learned their lesson in the sixties to not just throw every possible you know man out there. Uh, you know, granted you have like Spider Man, Ant Man, whatever, Batman, blah blah blah, but, you know, <laughs> dog welder. Uh- and um, you know, Calendar Man, Kite Man, this man, oh, Rainbow Julian, man, Gr- Julian Gregory, Waterman. Day. yeah. So, Strong Man, Rope Man, Tornado Man, yeah. So yeah. Wait, wait, anything what? You possibly could. Oh, so we're get, we're getting into so we're getting into the era of comics where Marvel and DC just had some weird names. Well, yeah, it, the, the it was, ones that I mentioned are some are a completely different franchise of the Mighty Heroes. Yeah, but the, the idea was they were just trying to push out because Superman and Batman and. Spider Man and all that. Iron Man were. They were just anything you could, uh, you know, like Thermos Man, stuff like that. It got really <laughs> weird. I'm, I'm serious, man. They, you know, but they kind of learned their lesson because there's only out of every hundred, you're going to get like one or two that'll stick. And it's because, like I said, initially with uh, character development, solid stories and stuff, that's what was more appealing. But if these guys were good, hundreds more would be better. And unfortunately, it took a long time to get past that. And I think that's also why you saw a huge influx on uh, a lot of villains that, you know, that Ooh, was going against, yeah. was going um, against Spider-Man. If they couldn't do it in titles or, or in separate titles, they're going to do it within the ones that they had. Like the Guardians of the Galaxy would constantly rotate people and stuff like that is what I'm getting at. 
And then you, once that cut, that dust kind of settled, you started solidifying who you had and went back to that one-to-one. -one. So if we've got the new mutants over here, well, the hell with that. We're going to have the team Titans over here. If you're going to have, you know, Batman over here, well, we're going to really push Moon Knight back into the forefront because he'd been forgotten since, you know, whenever. And then you also had these artists like Bob had mentioned with John Byrne, who'd hop back and forth between these companies, Joe Casada, all these guys would work for both sides. Hey, guess what these other guys are doing? And the only reason it got popular is because I was on it. How much are you going to pay me? Well, guess what I'll do for you? And, you know, that then the rights things and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. became a separate thing later on. But these were still company-owned properties that if they got the guy that made it really good because of how it looked or how it was written, that's where your one-to-one -one kept staying pretty solid for a while until, you know, the comics industry kind of came to its senses and focused on, on its own diversity. So th that's why I was asking the girls, it's like, okay, if this appealed to you, why didn't that? Because, you know, for me and Bob, it was just like, whatever came out, I'm reading it. <laughs> you, you know, back in the day, I mean, really, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, I, I wish I was. Well, I was, kidding. I was in this, my single digit years were in the 60s. And this yeah. was the time when he went to the grocery store to buy the comics. And he didn't always get every issue of all the titles. So you got, you get, just got to pick out, I think the grocery stores that I went to in, in, uh, in Monmouth. Uh, we're fairly we're more consistent than what I've heard from in other locations, but, but uh, it was to read them though, right? It was it, it was to, I went to read them. Yeah, I peek inside. I'd sometimes buy them. Um, yeah. yeah, this was it was the sixties, so ten to twenty five cents for you know sounds like a steal now, but it was it was an okay price yeah. still. But it wasn't done as an investment, or it wasn't done. You know, for what most most people are introduced to comics, or the, because the movie's coming out next week, is what I was getting at, and yeah, yeah. So that's what so I'm saying, Wayne. Is so I came then, up, you know, lo loving sorry. the. I came. Up, I grew up loving the Flash, the Silver Age Flash, Barry Allen, and uh, um, kind of really that, liked. Is it. it the one who wears the the, the metal helmet? That's no, no, Jay. no. That's the Golden Age Flash. Okay, yeah, that's Jay. I'm talking about Barry Allen, which is the one that you usually see on like the the. The TV show. That oh, right. was, plays on the TV show. Was oh. the yellow, the, the lightning bolt English. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, I know Brian was talking about like um, combo book character teams, or you know, like how the Marvel, like Marvel's teenage team was New Mutants. DC was. What about no? What? Oh, what about uh? Because when I was I, when I was watching um, when I was watching Guardians of the Galaxy, I heard about the 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 group the Nova Corps. So Marvel has Nova Corps, and then DC would have. What did you consider the, the Lanterns? Yeah, I was gonna say. Would you consider DC uh, DC's version to that the Lantern Corps? Probably the closest. Yeah. The Galactic like, I think Police. The, I think yeah. the Nova Corps came off of uh, was inspired somewhat by the. Wait, by what the was Green that, Lantern Sam? Corps. So I would agree on the Green Lanterns being like the closest. And then, and then the, the Avengers, you got the Justice League, or well, depending on the name of the Justice League, Justice League, Justice League of America. Yeah, a lot of the early stuff that was um, that was Marvel. A lot of the stuff that you find in Marvel has its roots in DC, and Marvel has done a much better job at um, trolling DC properties than Marvel has. Because uh, they have the uh, the Shi'ar Imperial Guard is based on the Legion of Superheroes. Hmm. The um, then there's of course the Squadron Supreme, which is a a, a one for one parody of the uh, um, of the Justice League of America. See, I'm glad I have. But you Bob don't here. have a lot of, <laughs> but you did there. But DC has tried bringing in um, Marvel group moot groups that were based on that were kind of trolls of Marvel. Um, past ages of Marvel characters, and they've kind of tanked. So, can I give an example? Like, all I'm go here, ahead. like... Go, go ahead, Elsa. Alright, so, it's basically, like, I think I'm pronouncing her name wrong. It's Sif, S-I-F. So, basically, Sif? they... Yes. And they used her as, like, a sort of rip-off, but, like you said, mockingly, of Wonder Woman. Uh, Lady, no, Sif was actually a character in Norse mythology. Yeah, that's actually from real mythology. Yeah. Oh, I'm not yeah. into mythology, so. Oh no, no, you're. It's no. That's the one thing I've noticed that DC and Marvel like to do. Mainly, Marvel is take characters from 
all to all for oral all forms of mythology well okay so the, the it's interesting to say that because that's what i was talking about earlier about how dc and marvel were, were their stories so dc was basing their new characters on established mythology you know the orphean myth and you know herculean and all that kind of stuff blah 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 right amazonians and what have you themiscara blah all that marvel grabbed them literally that's why hercules was in the marvel universe that's why thor was in the marvel universe and that kind of stuff so they were actually just lifting them directly out of you know, it's public domain grabbing them and lifting them out directly so uh to what you're saying elsa characters like that yeah might be a direct parallel even though they're from a real thing or you know quote unquote real real world mythology uh it was in an answer because it was don't have to pay for it sort of you can make whatever character you want she's going to have these equivalent powers because if i make it look too much like wonder woman well it's an obvious ripoff and there's been fights back and forth on that too but um with those kinds of differences in in play too uh sam with, with you and elsa being being female do the the stronger characters like that or the independent not just even female but like say young person or um uh grounded in a, a separate society from the normal run appeal to you guys on the DC side or the Marvel side more? Because they both try to appeal to so, broader audiences and they hit and miss all the time. I'm just, I'm curious. This might be controversial. I don't know. I am not a fan of how either one does female characters, especially with the way they look, but that's just a personal issue because like, Power Girl, for example, <laughs> oh, <laughs> she drives me nuts because I hate the way she looks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like I get that, 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 that was that was that was intentional. I think does she have oh, to oh, look oh, like well, that to be? There's a, a story behind character? that. Huh? Yeah. There's a story behind that actually. That I'm when sure they, there she, is. Why yeah, when, she, <laughs> when she first appeared, she had a normal superheroine uh, figure, and then just on just kind of on a lark. The uh, the artist decided, okay, each issue I'll draw her breasts a little bit larger until somebody says something, and that that's where she that is now. That's has since become uh, a part of the character, uh, such an integral part of the character that um, that's one of the rare instances where I don't mind having a big cleavage window. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to find an original version of power girl that doesn't look because i remember it in... has to go clear back to to her early days in infinity incorporated because i know power girl is in a sense a clone of supergirl pending on yeah the lore. well she's she's the earth yeah. 2 version of supergirl <laughs> from the silver age pre-crisis era because she is kara zor-el but she's just a different parallel universe and then yeah. okay so here, here here is power girls one of her early I mean, this could be wrong, but... Yeah, even looking at Supergirl's earlier costumes, it's like, yeah, no, yeah. no thanks. All-Star all -Star Comics, Super Squad. All-Star Squadron. Yeah. All-Star Comics, the Super Squad. Yeah, it looks like I have, I have some Infinity Incorporated Teen Titans type characters there. Uh, so, looks like Star Spangled Kid there on the left. Yeah, that was the other one. So, for, uh, so also, what, is I'm just a little too modest. For some of the female characters. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's hey, that's hey, it's, and I know Bob's gonna say it. There is nothing wrong with that. Uh, <laughs> there is everything right with that. <laughs> as, as as her father, if I could have her covered neck to toes in like a sheet or something, I'd be happy with it. But like, that's fine. Not to get off like topic or anything, but like even with like my Nightwing suits, when my dad built the second really one, well, really, really, really well done suit, really well made suits, by the way. Thank you. Which they are, but it, it bothered me because of the breastplate. Like, I hated it. Because <laughs> I wanted it flat-chested, and I, obviously, I'm female, that's not going to happen. But then seeing more female characters in comic books that kind of pronounce those features, it's like, that kind of turns me off of certain comics. It's like, eh. <laughs> Which is yeah, I prefer what I was... more modestly dressed heroines as well. Yeah. Which is kind of why I was going to so uh, was asking Elsa and Sam with, with uh, obviously the target audience being what it was, uh, the similarities and differences between the two companies. What was appealing to both you, story and art wise? That's kind of where I was getting that initially. Oh yeah. For me, like I personally did not really enjoy either side. Like, yes, they had a good storyline and a good protagonist, but it's like it just gets lost because no, no, I know it's made by male characters. Assuming what women do. <laughs> So, like, 
I just couldn't get into it as so much for, as I really want. It, I do it, any of their books huh? on either side. I said any 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 of the books from either company. I it's like a hit or miss with, with me, and like at the moment, I don't have like I prefer female superhero. Okay, because like I as <laughs> Sam was saying being modest and all that jazz but also there isn't like people like like what i look for is like some similarities of characters that i can relate to like none of the women i saw i could relate to like oh she's awesome she's famous but she has a secret identity well, or like look up faith yeah. when you when you get a chance the the comic book faith i think you'll you'll like it um <laughs> but what i was getting at was like since you had mentioned the covers and stuff, you know, a lot of those big splashy covers, that was what I was getting when I worked in the industry. That, that was a marketing trick to to appeal. It's like, oh, you know, this big action pose and stuff is going to be really, you know, exciting. And the books usually sucked on the inside. It was a little common thing. But what I was getting at from a female perspective from both of you, especially being introduced much at, later than all these things were first run, what was catching your attention? Height stuff notwithstanding, you know, not being able to grab them off the shelf, like you said. <laughs> yes. So, was it the the proposed storyline inside? Because they were both doing, both companies were making pretty much the same stories on off and on, back and forth. Was it the art? Was it the potential characters? Was it whether it was female or male? I, I mean, because there's a lot of similarities and differences between the two through these years you guys were introduced. And that, that's why I'm kind of curious. That's why I gravitate towards more male characters because you get the message across of what they're trying to do, but without showing off you know, like everything. Like, well, I would I also recommend both that. of you look into Hawk and Dove because she's not very sexualized, even though she oh, does man. wear a Oh, I suit. love Hawk and Dove. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and Brian, you were talking about Faith. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, read I, that. I, I love I love the cover. And it's seeing, like, as Brian was saying, seeing characters that people like us can relate to instead of like seeing you know half naked like lady death for example <laughs> but seeing like i, mean, I really that like her sapphire yeah sapphire i will agree that's the only one i will appreciate her artwork star sapphire the green lantern Ooh, oh connected to green lantern yeah oh and there's also oh. squirrel and there's also squirrel girl squirrel girl squirrel yeah. girl oh, it's, it's, uh, cute. you were about you were saying elsa I was about to say, um, also the Wasp, but I really loved her character design, but I could never find her comics. That's because that goes so far back. It's it's kind of tough to, to get someone. You might be able to find them on like Comic X and some of the websites and stuff, but that's an old character. Both of them are. But um, yeah, it, it, the reason I was asking too about the, you know, since this whole thing's about similarities and differences both companies were really struggling and trying to appeal to every possible audience they could in multiple different ways. And uh, depending on your jump in point, it was just, I was just curious as to what appealed to you because I, you know, obviously for me and, and, and Bob to some extent for a long time, it was just because we'd been reading these titles for years and we were reading them as they were coming out, the older ones. So the newer comics aren't really fair to ask you guys of that but if you were going to the library and finding these older ones i was just curious as from you what caught your attention on this one as opposed to that one even if they're well, almost identical like if they're both team teams from marvel and dc which one or the other would have gotten your attention and why let's just just hypothetically <laughs> all right i will admit i when i was looking through books and i noticed i mostly looked at for the cute guys so robin was one of my first crushes <laughs> Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, by the way, Robin, oh, no. that's one of Robin, the, the design I was telling you about for Robin, his uh, Leo, Tar his uh, circus yeah. performer suit. Yep. <laughs> like, so I have posters on my wall, mostly Nightwing. Um, and I don't read the comics, but I like the cover. <laughs> okay. Valid. For that reason, Elsa, which is that's funny. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, unlike you, I enjoyed reading it. Like, oh my god! Like, this well, I've, I've read them, but it's just I enjoy the covers more. <laughs> I mean, you gotta admit well, the art. The art styles are really. Also, art... What was that, Sammy? Cut out. Because now, like with most comics that I find, they have like these ridiculous ads in them, and then you can't get like the full story. It's like this is stupid. <laughs> I will agree with you with that. Like, it's ads. Yeah, it's like this is not what I want. 
the last time I looked inside a comic, which is actually, which admittedly has been a while, I just get there were no, so there were better. no more, there were actually fewer ads than there were in the 60s per page. It's just the stories are taking longer to tell. So they're taking like five, six issues to tell yeah, a to story tell that, one, that one book and story. back then would have yeah. taken just one. Yeah. Well, that's also struggling to try and make the dollars. So what you're saying, Elsa, is, um, all things being equal, if you had, you know, if there was a DC and a Marvel title right next to each other on the shelf, it it wouldn't necessarily be the proposed character of the story. It was just an, an innate appeal because they they did that yeah. intentionally. Is what? Okay, no, but that's that works. That's exactly why these differences and similarities are out there between these two co uh, companies. Because if they couldn't hook me, they might get you. You know, if I'm, but I might be a, more interested in. Um, the story that this one company is pushing out, even though the covers are the same. Oh, I want to know what the conclusion of the, the mighty fight here is, but you're interested. Oh, because you know, there's dreamy Nightwing on the cover or Robin or something, but the story might be the, the same. I, and I'm not making fun. It's just, it's the nature of the industry. And that's why these, these differences and similarities where they're at. Okay. Yeah. Because, um, you know, trying to be subjective or objective uh, on my part is kind of tough because of the history and same thing with Bob, but, you know, younger people coming into this, what was the appealing thing? Because you didn't start off at the beginning. You, even if you did the new 52 or the rebirth, which Marvel hasn't really done as much as overtly, you know, to get right. a fresh start. Speaking you, of new, you guys are both looking at years and years of, of backlogs. Yeah, see, and you're going, you know, there's just years and years of backlogs. So that's just very intriguing to me with the with the similarities being what they are, that the, the differences are that subtle to where a smaller part that might not appeal to a mass audience, which could or could not be the case, depending on the title, is what what you gravitated towards. Because it's all whatever you like. I mean, I I, I don't judge any of that. I have people read some weird. I've got my indie collection has got stuff that nobody but me and maybe Bob might have ever heard of before. We don't. We do not. We do not judge on this channel. No, not at all. Like, so like, like really so whatever appeals to you, does it is great. I what's that, honey? So I'm really into love stories. So if like there's a DC comic or like a Marvel comic, I usually tend to lean more towards the one that has a better love story in it. That's not like super sad or depressing. <laughs> okay, but if the story is the same, and Marvel and DC do this a lot, they'll have similar catastrophic events. They'll have similar <laughs> character developments. If it's a love story from DC or Marvel, is it going to be character driven for you at that point? Or would it be... The actual story inside and i guess the same thing would go to elsa too because like i said i, I, I don't mean to take, more character run off of this way and it's just like i said really curious to me because of being in the industry and what we we're talking about to see what these well no it, it, it's good it's good to get uh, the younger gen i'm not i mean i know oh. i'm like i know i'm like i'm in my like late 20s here but like the the just the i guess the, <laughs> the i guess it's good i guess it's a good opinion a good idea to get the millennial generation's opinion on yeah. comics whether it was from comics that you read as a kid or what Bob read and you know it's again more current I, stuff again yeah. my, my I don't know much about comics I'm more about you know know about the characters <laughs> sure well but see that leads into I all like the rest of the stuff characters. why does that fandom carry over into the animated series or into the movies and stuff oh, if yeah. they're almost identical like was what we're talking about so yeah okay so Sam and I it's, guess Elsa too it's like with um, shows Oh, you're cutting out. Oh, you said, what, what, what TV shows, Sam? Sam. It's, it's like with movies and TV shows where the, there can be like a lot of sex and drugs and like all of that stuff. But then it's like, I try to look past that because if it's an interesting enough character art for the story, like I can get past that without a problem. Same thing like with comics, if it has that stuff in it, but it has a larger character development, then that's something I lean more towards and can kind of except what goes in it kind of like the live action titans like there's a lot of that but it's the characters that i really enjoy watching because of what they go through so it's like kind of have to find what you're okay with as long as the story's good i felt bad for, i felt I, from the clips i've seen i felt so bad for jason todd in the in the titan show when the the, the stuff he was <laughs> the stuff the stuff oh, he, the stuff, the, the stuff that he get that he the stuff that the hand he got dealt in that one episode yeah. That poor kid. <laughs> do so much. We gotta like give him some like space for a minute. <laughs> uh, 
So, um, you no, the, okay. oh, I was, was going to say, Elsa, would you have the same opinion as Sam yeah. then? If you had a DC and a Marvel book with the same storyline that you might have been uh, attracted to, whether it's an action story, a love story, or, you know, interdimensional travel or wizardry, whatever, in the DC and Marvel, same storyline, would it be the character or the artwork? What would, what would be your attraction there? Now that I'm older, what I go for is like the character character's attention, like. Let me, like, let me give an example. Hang on, let me think. <laughs> like, Batman and Catwoman. I mean, yes, Batman and Catwoman. Like, they have okay. the opposite attraction that could work perfectly. Like, that kind of vibe. I don't know if you guys can understand me, like, what I'm saying. Cause I, 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 so. I, I get it. I understand the, 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 the love chemistry between Catwoman. And it's, like, it's, it's, it's sexual at times, but then it's also, like, emotionally connected but then it's like and okay it's i don't disconnect because and then there's the something like in a cat world like the almost fucking black widow situation mm -hmm. yeah. yes so basically okay. Like that. okay see and that's kind of what i was getting at with, with, with elsa the two is that so if you had a dc and a marvel book same exact storyline you're normally attracted to and it, you're going to go with characters that you're familiar with before you would try something new then in, in that situation i would honestly do what i know but then okay. later on, go yeah. on to that road Okay. Yeah. And, and the only reason I, like I said, I wasn't trying to uh, steamroll you on any of that way. It was just. Oh, no, 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 no. You're, you're, you you're, you're, you're fine. You, you got, like I said, you guys, like you, Bob, have like the more experience in this. I, like I said, the reason why I wanted to do this was to get all your opinions. Yeah. And I'm, uh, topic. Okay. And I was just generally curious from both of their perspectives. Like I said, Sammy's waters are a little muddy because of me. But to have her answer that now, the you know, because she hasn't lived with me for a while. And then Elsa's is the what's the attraction oh. because there are literally one to one characters for both sides. There's the same artists for both companies, same writers for both companies off and on. And when these kids are jumping into this stuff, what is the appealing factor given all these similarities and differences we've been talking about already? Never mind others that we haven't. And that's just interesting to me. So you're going with old familiar, even though the other company might be putting out the same exact story, and that that. It speaks to what I was talking about. If you have a strong character development, you're going to be attracted to that, even if the other one looks better, right? Yeah. Okay. We were mentioning. I wanted to wait until you were done with that, but uh, um, you were, we were mentioning earlier about uh, how are the characters we're drawn to tend to be ones that are are new when we're new to the comics. We're getting in early on the story, but um, my favorite Marvel character is a more recent character, Nocturne. Oh, okay. Of the Exiles, who yeah. I think was introduced around the turn of the century, and um, um, you know, daughter of a of a another of a parallel Earth, uh, Nightcrawler and Scarlet Witch, and hmm. has a little bit of her parents' powers, and yeah, spent a little time with Excalibur. Oh, and... oh yeah, I remember. I remember, Bobby, you were talking about that in the X Two podcast review, I think. Yeah. Um, well, and, and that there's another question there, too, with the similarities and differences, Wayne, with all these uh, established characters that we all know and love, what's everybody's opinion when they do something completely different, like the DC Elsewhere stories or the Marvel What Ifs and things like that? Are you attracted to that stuff because it's what you know done in a different way? Oh, I always loved What If. Yeah, the, but, that was that was actually something I wanted to I wanted to bring up was just how they DC did the Elseworlds and uh, Marvel did What If, but the, the, there's a there's a distinction between the two in that uh, the the What If is takes a particular moment and turns it in another direction, whereas the Elseworlds is like a whole different you know they can regenre the whole universe mm -hmm. pretty much. So there's a, there's a similarity and difference in in one take right there. I wouldn't even thought, the same I wouldn't, thing, I wouldn't even thought about. Both. <laughs> I wouldn't even I wouldn't even thought about the similarity between Else Worlds and what if I'm more familiar with the the what if because of uh Disney Plus's show Marvel's What If. Okay, yeah. but what if has been around for like for I didn't know that. Oh um, yeah. That's at least the late sixties because of the classic volume one number thirty-four. I can remember that was that was a very interesting one, which I could discuss some other time. Oh. Yeah, my favorite what if is when what if Punisher was a uh, hall monitor in high school. That was <laughs> My absolute favorites. Uh, so, that wasn't in that. I, that wasn't in that particular issue. I was, I was, you know, thinking of more of what if Luke Cage was white. You know, so, that type of thing. Yeah. So Bob and Brian, or whoever wants to answer this. So you guys were talking about uh, Marvel and DC's mythological fantasy stuff, like the characters. Mm -hmm. 
Who would you say DC's version is of Jason Blood, aka the Demon Etrigan? DC's that is DC. No, yeah. I mean who would, who, who would you say? Who, who would you say? The, um, so who would you say the who is a Marvel version of Etrigan? Okay, Closest I can yeah, think of Ghost Rider. <laughs> uh, yeah, the 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 uh, Spirit of Vengeance thing. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, well, true. Yeah. I mean, I'm not from uh, I'm not familiar I'm not familiar with much, but I know uh, from what I've seen in the movies and the animated and an animated um, uh, Justice League Dark, and from the animated series, how Etrigan was a demon, but his soul was put into Jason Blood, so they're kind of two. They're-